Okay. Um, fishers of men, we as pastors and teachers and deacons and elders of the church, um, we're called to be fishers of men. Uh, the Lord pointed out me, to me today that the problem is some men have lost, some preachers, some ministers, whatever your ministry is, has lost their light. You know, to be a good fisherman, you got to take a light with you um, in a dark place. Believe me, this world is a dark place. Very, very dark place. There is no light in this world at all. Total darkness. So that means that we have to have a light to go fishing in this place. And, you know, I want to point out today that Jesus is a preacher. Not was. Jesus still is preaching. He's up there in glory, man, just preaching away today, you know. And up there he's preaching victory. Down here, you know, he was preaching... Uh, the kingdom of heaven is coming and up there he's preaching things like uh, the people are coming I'm gonna go get your mama and your brother and your sister and all that I'm gonna bring him back here he's preaching victory just like he preached here and we we need to preach victory you know as a fisherman uh, without a light you could wake up the next uh, wake up you could wait till the Sun comes up the next morning and you can find that your pole was in the middle of a field, a flat field all night long. You sitting there on a log looking out over what you thought was water, the wind blowing the grass, you know, and it's so dark you can't see nothing. See, the devil has a fog all across this land right now. And we need to have a penetrating light. We need, we need God to come and stir this up and blow this confusion, this fog of confusion out of the way. And we need to have a light that we might see. Okay? Now, and listen to this. You know, the Lord was... Man, I'll tell you what, the Lord was really talking today. Between my words, you know. I was I was speaking uh, uh, the mouth of the Lord. He was using my mouth to talk to my heart. Amen? And listen, Jesus calls the disciples. It's in uh, Matthew chapter 4. Down about verse 18. I'm going to start reading. Well, 17. It says, From that time Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Jesus was a preacher. Amen? And is a preacher. And verse 18, Jesus, walking by the sea of Galilee, saw two brethren, Simon and Peter, and, and Andrew, his brother. There were three brothers there, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. And he said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And straightway uh, left their nets and followed him. Now that's a good idea. Uh, You've got to leave your stuff behind. Because Jesus has a better way of fishing. Amen. He, the way he fishes uh, catches so much that a net can't hold it anyway. And he proved that when he told them to, uh, throw the net on the other side of the boat. The Bible said that th there's so many fish that they couldn't, the nets couldn't even hold them. The nets began to tear. <laughs> Amen. So, and uh, these must have been strong men, but they still couldn't hold what Jesus had caught. You know, if you can tear a net by your hands by pulling it, you're a strong man. Uh, no matter what size that net is. Okay, if it's got so many fish in there. And uh, going to read the rest. This uh, a couple of verses here it says, and Jesus um, uh, going on from there, he saw other two brethren, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, um, in a ship with Zebedee, their father, mending their nets. And he called them. He saw that they were mending their nets. These were hard-working boys. And uh, they had apparently caught so many fish, they had wore them nets out. They, they knew about fishing. So at least uh, five of the disciples 
that Jesus called first were fishers. He wanted to make sure that that uh, they had this concept of fishing, and uh, because it has a lot to do with catching men. Okay, there's a right way to fish and there's a wrong way to fish. Amen. We'll talk about that in just a minute here. Got a couple, another verse to read here. And immediately left their ship and their father and followed him. Okay, and Jesus went about Galilee teaching in their synagogues. Now listen to this part right here. I this what I want you to hear very closely. Preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sicknesses and all manner of diseases. This is a part of our ministry. And and his fame went out through all of Syria. Okay, now this this is the part. Now, uh, uh, an old wise elder told me one time says if you could just get somebody healed, listen, <laughs> that's good because that's the basic part of the ministry. When it seems like when a man reaches this part, he 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 drops everything else, and he and he, for the forty years he points to this one thing that he did. Oh, I've done that forty years ago. I've done that. I've done that, and and he never does nothing else. What good is 40 years ago if you can't do anything else? You're, you're, you're going from the point of having life to, to dying all that time. We need to stay in it. Whatever you did to get to that point, keep doing that. Keep praying. Keep fasting. Keep seeking God. Keep going that extra step like Jesus got up after he prayed so hard that his blood became as, or his sweat became as great drops of blood and went and prayed a little father went a little father and prayed even the more earnestly and and that's what we need to do we need to get to that place Jesus was showing us there that we need to get to that place where we can where we can enter into another step of God when we take that extra step when a spirit begins to build when, uh, when when the power of God when that light comes in in that fashion in that manner then therefore men can see confusion leaves I talked to so many people uh, online and and I and I'm I'm yeah, I'm with the most of you all. Listen, I am I am in the middle of reaching this place of God. I'm not there yet. I'm confessing I'm not there yet. But I'm going to get reach that place of God where the Lord will have a strength in me and a light that men can see. You know what? If if the whole world is preaching and preaching and preaching, we have no strength because we don't have that which Jesus told us to have right here. Healing all manner of sickness and disease among the people. If you're not doing that, then you're not preaching the gospel. You don't have the right light. You don't have the right thing. You don't have the right um, uh, spirit. You, you haven't entered. You haven't taken that step into that place of holy of holies. You haven't gotten the power of God. You haven't reached out. And you, like Dwight Thompson said, some most don't have enough power to blow fuzz off a peach. Well, Dwight used to have. You know, right now all he's got is a, is an expression, like 99 percent of the other preachers out there, and the ones that does have something they don't got very much. The Bible says that God will laugh at you in your calamity. Proverbs uh, one. God will laugh at you or at your, in your calamity. When your trouble comes, he'll laugh at you. That's why he let God sent that, that tornado, that, uh, that hurricane, Isaac, and set over top of, of New Orleans and sat there for 10 hours. A hurricane one sat there, a hurricane called laughter, sat there and just spin for 10 hours over top of of uh, where Katrina had went through and totally wiped out. God would laugh at you in your calamity. You know what the pitiful thing was about that? No preacher. No preacher said anything about it. I did not hear it one time. I, they was all afraid men's going to be offended. What about God? God was, God was offended that men didn't say something about that. Their light had went out. Their light had went out. They, they're so busy about See, they're, they're using these fake lures. You, they don't even know what real bait is anymore. They think real bait is not offending men. No, it's not. Real bait is not offending God. Amen. All right. I, this can go on for hours. There's so much to this. I'm going to preach a sermon on this. <laughs> God bless you. Thank you for joining me. We'll see you next time. Another great message right here across in the middle ministry.